Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video and today we're going to be checking out the Creality Ender 3. But this is not your ordinary Ender 3, this is the Max version. And what this is, is a, a large format that gives you the legendary Ender 3 design and construction while now having a large build volume. So in this video we're going to unbox it, set it up, and do some prints. Alright, so let's get started. All right, so the Ender 3 Max comes in this box and we can see here there's a picture of what it looks like and the box is actually quite large. There's our dimensions there, 66 by 55 by 30 centimeters. So yeah, not a small box for sure. And the shipping label says 24 pounds, which seems about right. All right, so here we are on top. So let's go ahead and open the box. So I'm pretty excited about this printer because I really do enjoy the Ender series. So this will be kind of interesting to see what Creality done with the Max here. So it looks like we have the usual Creality black soft foam and this is what we see on top. So we do have a few parts here and there. So there is going to be some assembly required, but definitely not as much as the older Ender 3s, the original ones. So here we have a packet full of things. We do get a little sample of white PLA filament, a US type power cord, part of a spool holder. And this looks like the display and it is the older style. Quite interesting that they're still using this on a newer machine, but that's okay if this is what keeps the cost down. I really don't mind this old school kind of UI here. Unfortunately, the back is still open, so, but you can print out a little cover to cover it up. So, okay, so here we have the other piece of the spool holder. This is the main bracket. So this piece will just go in here. Simple as that. But yeah, we have a lot of older and newer parts here together. So this is a newer design. And here we have the power supply. And I can't really show you guys the label on it, but it is a mean well power supply. It looks like 350 watts. So this is the more higher end and you guys can see it's a slim design and it has a fan here that's not continuously on but it turns on when it needs to. So yeah, it's a definitely a nice power supply and we have a, a little box here in junction with the power switch. This is where we're going to plug in our cord. So yeah, we got some pretty old school mix here with new school, I guess. But I think the Ender 3 Pro has this same setup here. All right, so I think we're done with this top part here and we got a lot of thick foam so yeah lots of protection and so below that we can see we have the gantry and it is it looks like pretty much pre-assembled what i can tell here and also it appears that we are connected to the base so we're gonna have to get both of these out together the base and the gantry and you guys can see how large the build plate is there it's really huge for an ender printer so what's interesting here is that the base is actually still quite small. You guys can see the bed and the base, they're almost identical, which is kind of crazy, but really unique. And our gantry connects on the sides here, which is quite interesting way of doing it. And that really keeps it compact. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out of the way and see what else here is in the box. And it appears to be everything. And again, lots of foam. They're really concentrating on packing these newer printers very well, which is nice to see because some of these things got to be shipped all over the world and the boxes go through pretty rough travel. Now, one thing that's kind of negative though about all this foam is that it is a lot of waste and some environmental impact. So even though I do appreciate all this foam, I would like to see some kind of more maybe biodegradable packing material that can be similarly formed, but you know, wouldn't impact the environment so much. But I guess you can't have everything, right? <laughs> So the two main parts are tethered together with wiring and I guess that makes it easier for the end user to put it together with plugging things in. But let's go ahead and take off the build plate here. And we do have like these metal clips that pull out to the side. And just the two front ones and then you just slide it out from the back ones. Now the thing that's interesting here is that we do get a glass bed with the ultra base type material that's 
coated on top, which usually works very well, especially from Creality. I've never really had any issues with their surfaces. And what's great about this is that when it heats up, it grabs the filament and then as it cools, the print just pops off. So usually it works very well. The only negative to this is let's say if you had a power loss and your bed cooled off, there is a high chance that your model could pop off. But a lot of times if you don't touch it and reheat it, it'll stick back on. So, so what I want to do is flip the base over. So we can see a little better what's going on under here. And I do want to pop off this little cover here where our main board is so we can take a glance at it. So let's go ahead and open up this bag here of stuff. So we do get some paperwork, a little thank you note, and most importantly, a user manual, which is actually quite nice and quite useful. Also shows us how to put the printer together, which should be quite simple. So we do get a metal spatula that's somewhat sharpened. Not really. And you definitely don't want to use this on the type of bed that this printer comes with because this will scratch it up. So we do get some snippers. They're not really branded anything, but they seem to like they will do the job. And I like how Creality includes these. They're quite useful. And here we have a baggie of quite a few things in here. So we have a USB adapter for the micro SD card that's inserted in there. We get an extra nozzle, 0.4 millimeter, uh, little clips for the couplers on the Bowden tube, and some bolts that are labeled. We also get a little clean out needle and this is if your nozzle gets jammed you can clean it out but watch out for this thing it's quite sharp and also we get a bag of tools where we have some allen wrenches a flat head screwdriver and a couple open-ended wrenches for adjusting the rollers and other things on the printer all right so let's grab an allen wrench and open up this cover here so there's three little bolts here and then another one on the top here on the other side all right so let's take a closer look here now we can see there's quite a bit of wires here and they're all kind of bundled together. There's not much room. It's kind of a small area, which is kind of interesting. A lot of printers have, you know, huge amounts of room. The Ender 3 here just has a little box where the board lives and all the wires come from here. So everything does seem to be organized well and bunched up. But yeah, it looks like we have the Creality version 4.2.2 board in here now i do believe that this has got the silent steppers in it so and you guys can see that they are integrated into the board so there is a fuse there also and pretty large heat sink right here and looks like an arm processor so yeah pretty simple design here nothing too complicated everything's already pre-mounted and organized and we do have this fan here that blows over the board to cool it off so I'm going to go ahead and put all this back together. We'll flip it around and we'll start assembling it. All right, so let's grab the manual and we'll go to step one. So step one shows us that we need to put the gantry over the base. And then there's four bolts that go on each side, which are the M565. And that's these here. We're going to need the large wrench. So we're going to grab the gantry, the upper portion. And hopefully you guys can see here, but there's a little cutout here and on the other side. And the rail should slide right in there. But it is a pretty snug fit, so that's good. Now, before you do insert this, make sure that your main cable here that comes from the back is not all twisted up. If it is, you know, flip this thing around until it's untwisted and then insert it into the base here. And also, if you need more wire, you can lower the Z-axis here so you can have a little more cable to play with. But yeah, it's pretty simple and it's kind of holding itself pretty much right now. But yeah, our bolts are just going to literally go through here and then into the frame. And there are two of them. So we just got to line them up and then tighten them up. All right, so I haven't tightened them all the way. Let's go to the other side. And we'll do the same thing here. Now, obviously, guys, when you put this in, you got to put the motor to the back here. So the back is where this other motor is and the heated bed cable comes out. So, and I don't think you'd be able to do it any other way. All right, so we're going to snug these up nice and tight. Go to the other side. And that's good right there. So yeah, it feels really solid. And the way they designed it here, it's quite good because the channel is holding it very nicely from rocking back and forth. So it's actually very stable. So quite clever design there. So another thing that's quite important is you want to go around and tighten all the frame bolts. So there's a lot of bolts everywhere and you want to check them. Make sure they're tight because a lot of times they'll be loose and you want to tighten it all up so it can be nice and rigid. And the ones that are actually quite important are underneath. And maybe you guys can see them right here. There's four of them. So you want to definitely make sure that these are nice and snug. And mine were actually quite loose. And so these four bolts keep the Y axis from moving around. At least it is on the other Ender 3s. On this one, they have another brace here, which helps with it not flexing back and forth, which two bolts go from here. So yeah, 
this printer has really thought through. This is what I like about Creality is their engineering and overall designs work very well. All right, so that was step one. So step two is installing the power supply, this guy here, and you are gonna need the M425 bolts. And if you are looking at the printer from the front, it goes here on the right side, right behind this rail. I'm gonna raise this up a bit. So here you can see there's a couple holes. We do need to pull out this power cord here that's was tucked inside, if yours is also. But yeah, the supply is literally gonna sit like this, and these two holes here are gonna line up with the threads on the casing of the power supply. So we're just gonna grab our bolt, go through the hole, and then line it up with the power supply. Same thing down here. So yeah, this part is pretty simple. Snug it up, and this is what it should look like. So yeah, it just lives here right behind this rail here. And this is where your main power button is. And there's the cord coming out of it, which we'll plug into the other side. And we'll do that at the end when we plug everything in. So yeah, guys, as you can see, so far, everything is pretty simple. So the third step here is to install the display. So we are going to need the M510 bolts. And the display simply mounts right here with the two bolts into the frame. But I wanna go ahead and plug in the plug here that comes from underneath, and it's like this colored one here. And I think it plugs in into EXP3, which is sitting like this, the closest that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. And we can go ahead and install the display. Snug it up, and that looks really good right there. Now I think this wire here should probably go underneath the printer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That does make more sense stay under all right so for step four we got the spool holder if you're looking at the front it goes on the left side right over here on this channel and so if we look at the bracket you guys can see that it kind of just clips on and then holds on to the channel itself so yeah we're just going to put it in on the top and then go down with it and there is a nice little rubber foot here that sits down and that's where it lives so it's not really a sturdy thing but it does move around in there quite easy and wobble but it doesn't really matter once you put your spool on here, it's gonna, you know, weigh down and should be fine. So this piece here will go towards this way, since our spool needs to go here and then feed up to the extruder. Now the interesting part about this thing is that it does fold over, so it's a little easier maybe to store or, you know, even if you wanted to kind of be on an angle or something, you could use it that way, so. Yeah, pretty cool. So for step five, they want us to put the glass build plate back on, and then step six is connecting all the wires. So let's go to the wiring next. So this main wire that goes up here, that was pre-assembled already, we have quite a few plugs here to plug in. And it's not very difficult to know where they go because they're all labeled. So there's a zip tie here we need to cut. So the larger plugs are for the motors and the smaller ones are for the end stop switch and the filament detector. So the filament detector actually has a label here that says what it is. And that's this thing right here. So let's go ahead and plug that in right there. And then the extruder motor right here has an E on it with the large plug. We're gonna plug that there. And then we just have two more wires, which is the X larger one and an X smaller one. So the larger one here is for the motor. And this is the X axis motor. And then we got the X end stop switch. And I don't know if you guys can see, but it's inside there. And this plug goes in there. It's a little bit hard to reach, but there's quite a bit of room in there. You just gotta stick your finger, but yeah. The smaller plug and then the larger one here for the motor. And that is all of the wires up here. Now, if we go down, we can see the Z-axis motor, and there is a wire here. Again, the larger plug with a label that says Z, and you want to go underneath the printer. And so the Z plugs in here, and then we got another Z that's a smaller, and that's for the Z-axis end stop switch, which is right here, and that plugs in right under here. So we're pretty much done, but we got one more main plug to plug, which is the power plug, and that's actually underneath the printer. So we can see the main plug coming from the power supply and the other part of it is right here coming out of the control board. I think the power supply wire also needs to go underneath the channel just like that. Now there are a couple clips here that hold wires. I'm going to take one off and use one for this side and then use the other one on the other side of the plug and that way we got a nicer cleaner kind of routing there. So yeah that looks good right there and here's our display cord here so you can kind of play around with it and tuck it all in nicely. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. So one thing that I haven't pointed out is that we got these nice large rubber feet and there are six of them and they're actually quite squishy. So that should help with vibrations. Uh, really nice to see that they're using these nice rubber feet. All right, so let's flip it back around. 
And that pretty much concludes the assembly of the printer. Now we do need to put our bed still back on here. So let's go ahead and peel off the protective layer. And the reason we haven't had it on there is we don't want to mess it up as we're putting it together. And plus you don't want to take off this film until you're done with everything. So you don't scratch it or get grease on it. Yeah, all we got to do, go to the back, slide it in. And then these clips here in the front will clip over it. And that's how it's held. So yeah, pretty nice. And I like how... The printer has such a large volume of printing area, but it still feels compact, which is quite interesting how they achieved this. Now, before we plug it in and power it on, we need to do a couple things. The first thing is we need to check all of our rollers and also check just the whole printer, all the bolts, make sure everything is together, the belts that they're running true on their pulleys and things like that. So, so this part is not too fun, but quite necessary to check the printer for adjustment, make sure everything is as it should be, because if something's off, you want to correct it now and not, you know, try to figure out what's going on later so we're going to start with the bed and what we need to do is check the rollers underneath so first we'll move it around to see what it feels like actually feels pretty good i do feel a little bit of imperfection so what we need to do is get underneath here and this might be a little bit hard to show now well maybe not so yeah you guys can see there's three rollers here so three of them are adjustable and then there's three more on the other side that are not adjustable well actually this middle one is adjustable on the other side and so what we're going to do is we're going to check them by just turning them so this one is adjusted good so what you want is you want it to just kind of do a burnout as you're moving it around in one spot so let's go to this one. So this one's too loose. It's not doing anything. And then this one here is a little too tight. I can barely turn it. So I'm going to grab my wrench. And I'm going to loosen this one just a bit by turning the eccentric nut. All right. And as I loosened it, feels much better. And actually the middle one now started to grab, which is kind of interesting. And this one's good too. So they actually all feel really good now. Now you might have to, you know, go back and forth and adjust it. The whole point of this is that you can spin the little wheel here pretty easily in one spot all of them so ultimately what you want is you want it to be as loose as possible but not wobble back and forth so like our bed's not wobbling but the wheels are quite easy to turn in one spot so let's see what kind of motion we got oh yeah that definitely made it really nice so now it's smooth as butter so even though it looked like that we didn't really need to do much because i turned one of them a little bit that changed everything and it made it perfect now. So if you feel any kind of vibrations or kind of like catching as you move it, that means something is wrong and it's most likely too tight. So try to make it as loose as possible without having any wobble and usually that works out really good. So while we're over here, we're gonna check our belt, make sure it's running true on the pulleys, on the front here and the back where the motor is. So on mine, everything looks good, but if you do need to adjust it, there's two bolts on each side that you can loosen and move this bracket, offset it a bit, and plus you can tighten the belt if you need to do that. All right, so for the next part, let's go to our x-axis, and again, mine doesn't feel right, and there's a really large little catch moment right here, so the rollers are definitely way too tight on this thing. So I'm going to flip the printer around. And maybe you guys can see a little better, but here we have the adjustment on the bottom, then two stationary on the top here. Let's grab our wrench and start loosening it. This was extremely tight. Okay, there we go. So I got it loose, but now it's too loose. So let's go the other way. All right, and that feels pretty good. I can turn the roller in one spot. And now it's nice and smooth. Look at that. So yeah, guys, it's not complicated. Just, you know, a little bit of adjusting. And this is more important than anything else. You want to get your printer as smooth and as everything aligned as possible. And that's what's going to make the biggest difference in print quality. Now we do also have the Z axis here with this lead screw here, and this could be quite important too. And we wanna make sure that our Z axis also is smooth. So mine seems to be okay, but we do have rollers here that ride around the channels, and we wanna check those. Now on mine, it's way too tight on this side, way too loose on this side. So it looks like I just need to loosen this side, and I think that side might tighten up. But our eccentric nuts are on the inside. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this side. All right, so that got loose. So I'm able to spin the rollers now. Let's see what happened here. Okay, so these tighten up just a bit also. And that one feels okay too, but I think we need to tighten up this one just a bit. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with everything here. So the other part that's quite important is the power supply. And on the back of it here, we can see that there's a little opening. And this is where you're going to set your voltage. So depending on where you live, you're going to set it to 230 or 115. So mine's set on 230 right now, so I need to switch it. 
now I'm on 115 so so you definitely don't want to forget and check that before you plug in the printer into the power cord all right so let's take a closer look at the Ender 3 Max so it does have a pretty decent sized footprint you can see it here on the table and we have a volume of 300 by 300 by 340 tall so all right so starting here on the top we can see still have a pretty small 2020 channel on the top and then we got 2040s going down so there is no spool holder up here and the way this printer is designed with the channels going on the inside it's really rigid up here which is really nice to see flipping the printer around you can see the lead screw has a little guide up here and this is just to prevent from bending the lead screw by pulling on it and kind of keeping it in place there is a little bearing inside and it does move around so going down from there we can see our extruder assembly which is metal glad to see that standard because the plastic ones are not as great so we got the stepper motor underneath that drives the gear which pushes the filament through the little clips are already installed in the couplers which also comes with extras as we saw earlier going this way we can see we have a filament detector and it is a plastic body but it does have looks like a brass insert to help it from eating into itself so very happy to see those kind of details and it is brass on both sides also while we're over here we can see the brass bushing for the lead screw it does have a spring here so this is an anti-lash meaning it keeps it from just falling down so there's like a little bit of tension so the weight of the whole axis doesn't force it just to fall down so right over here we have the x-axis motor and the little cover right in front of it and this is where we plugged in that x-axis instop switch on the other side here we can see we have the power supply that mounts straight to the rail it's got a little fan here our voltage settings and a little cover here with the on and off switch it is fused and this is where we're going to plug in our cord so let's check out the hot end assembly here from the back side you can see the rollers the bottom roller which is adjustable so we do have dual axial part cooling fans the heat block has a silicone sock on it going to the front of the hot end you can see our ptfe tubing also has a clip there going inside to the heat brake and it does appear to be creality's normal heat brake that they've been using forever i guess mk9 or whatever mk it is right now so our wiring is already tethered with the tube and we can see a little closer here the two fans on each side we got a large heat brake fan and the whole thing is kind of like a v-shaped design i guess accommodating the coolers so yeah it looks pretty promising we'll see how well this hot end does so here we have the x-axis belt tensioner so if you need to adjust your belt this is where you can do it and going to the other side that's that little cover here We've got a qr code this is our x-axis end stop switch going down straight from there we have the z-axis switch and that's where it plugs in so this is what stops the z-axis on the way down so as we saw we get a large glass build plate with the perforated coating which sticks when it's hot and then pops off when it cools off nice ender logo there pretty easy way to get it off just push these tabs over on each side and then pull it out but mostly you don't have to do that because you know the prints should pop right off as they cool and just another reminder do not use the metal spatula that was included on this coating or you will ruin it really fast so going down we can see the aluminum heated bed and awesome to see that it is also insulated so the whole bottom part has insulation which is going to help it heat up really quick and we definitely need that for this size bed we got large adjustable knobs with the heavy duty high quality springs six rollers total on the bed three on each side our 40 40 y-axis rail the belt idler that's adjusted here on the sides here we have the manufacturing sticker what our printer is called the volume we can print the size of the machine 350 watts of power and weighs 9.5 kilograms and right beneath that we can see this is where we're going to insert our micro sd card and also connect with a micro usb port so one thing i want to mention real quick if you like to customize it looks like you can put a tray in here or print a tray out that can live right under here kind of like on the older ender 3s and ender 3 pros so that would be a pretty good mod to do so looking to the right of the printer we have the display let's go ahead and peel the protector off so this is an older style ender display with the rotary knob i know a lot of printers already moved to touch screen and whatnot else but i feel like this is still relevant especially for a budget printer like this and gives you so much for the price and also being a little nostalgic to me because the ender 3 was one of my first printers and you know had the screen so it really brings me back to those first days all right so we're at the back of the printer again so this is our z axis motor so our wiring comes from the bottom and then goes up to all of this stuff here you guys can see how the spool holder sits there so it does move around quite easy and then you know it's adjustable and you can even fold it away or even take it out it comes off pretty easy and it does have a nice little foot there that it sits on so and also all the frame pieces here have caps everywhere including the tops so there's no sharp edges anywhere so that's nice the heated bed wiring here is strain relief very nicely 
and it just routes under. This is our Y-axis motor. It does have a little idler bracket here, Y-axis in stop switch. And I really like how they have this frame here, which secures the Y-axis here from wobbling around. And you guys can see the power wire going there and then into the board back there. So all the wires kind of flow from there and go everywhere. So. And one thing I wanted to note before I forget that when you are assembling it and moving the axes around by hand, I don't know if you guys noticed that if you do it too fast or rapid, you can see the screen coming on. So it's okay to do it a little bit, but you know, if you do it extremely fast, you could damage the electronics. So be careful with that. Same thing with the bed and the Z axes. The motors do produce power and feed it back. So, so if you get it to flicker here and there, it's not a big deal, but don't do it on purpose because it can mess something up. All right, so let's grab the power cord and we're gonna plug it in right here. Now again, make sure your power supply is switched to the correct voltage. All right, so let's hit the power button here on the side and it lights up. So we got a little Ender logo there and it booted up. You guys probably can't see anything. The screen does kind of have an angle where it points up. So, so which is kind of nice because you usually look down on the printer. So I do like that. So before we look at the menus and whatnot else, I want to home the printer to make sure all the axes work and then also preheat it. Now, before I'm going to click the home button and we probably should have done this before we even powered it on, but we need to check, make sure that our Z axis in stop switch here is in the correct position. So I'm going to go ahead and just go down here. I'm going to make sure that my Z axis gets clicked before my nozzle even gets close to the bed. And sure enough, that's the case here. So we are pretty safe. And the reason you want to check for that is because you don't want your nozzle to, you know, go into the bed and start scraping into it. So if you're really nervous that something maybe is not right, you can go ahead and pull out the, the glass build plate and then figure it out. And then once you're comfortable, put it back in. So, all right. So I'm going to click on the knob here. And this is how you operate the screen by clicking and turning. And we're going to go to prepare and then out of home. So I'm going to click it and we can hear. Okay. So from what I can hear here, the Z axis is definitely loud going up and down, but the Y and the X were quiet. So this sounds like it does have the silent steppers. All right. So the printer home. So that's good to see. And our nozzle is definitely too high from the bed. But what I've noticed here is it looks like on mine here, they ran the bed down all the way and compressed the springs, which I think is going to work out about right when we go to level. So that's the next thing we need to do is we need to level the build plate. Now this part, you want to definitely take your time and do it. So this is an absolutely necessary step. So let's see if the end of three max here it has any kind of bed leveling assistant. And scrolling around, guys, I cannot see anything about bed leveling. So what we're going to have to do here is the old school way. And the way that works is we're going to auto home it. And then after we home it, we're going to manually move everything around ourselves. So this is going to be a completely manual leveling. So I'm going to go ahead and home it again just to make sure. And then once it homes, we're going to go down and click on disable steppers in the prepare menu. And that's going to release all of our steppers where we can move them by hand. You want to be really careful not to push down on the X axis so it doesn't, you know, bump it out of the way. And now we can move the Y here, the bed and the X. And so for this, you're going to need some kind of sheet of paper. I'm just going to use some printing paper here and we're going to start with a corner here. Now, since we're way off, we're going to need to raise the bed roughly everywhere the same first. So kind of eyeball it. All right, so I got the whole thing lifted up. So now we can start with this corner here. So don't make that first corner too close on the first pass. Let's go to our next corner here. Okay, so we're already too close to the bed. So keep your paper between the bed and the nozzle. That way, you know, you don't scratch up the bed. So now we're going to go to the back and then to the other side. But now that we know that we're, you know, we're starting to get close before we continue and, you know, micro adjust it, we need to go ahead and preheat the bed. So again, we're going to go to prepare. And I'm going to go ahead and go to preheat PLA. So as it's heating up, we're going to take it a few minutes because it is quite a large bed and it's glass. I'm going to go ahead and keep going around and checking. All right. So I know I'm really close and the bed is getting toasty. It's at 51 right now. So yeah, it's still going up and then it's going to 60. All right. So I'm pretty happy with four of the quarters. Now I'm going to go to the center and check that. And that feels about just right. It might be a little looser. So if you need to bring up the whole thing a little bit or down, you can turn each knob on each corner, you know, just a little bit of a turn the same on each side and you can make it go up and down on the whole platform. All right, guys. So that should be good right there. So it's not too complicated. Just take your time. Even though this is, you know, completely at manual leveling, it's not very hard. As you saw, you just, you know, move it around. Now, one thing you definitely want to do is you want to go back to prepare and then out a hole 
let it home and then disable the steppers and then check it again because you never know you might have bumped this off as you were leveling it so i'm going to disable steppers and i'm just going to recheck everything really quick and everything's still the same so yeah and this printer having a glass bed it is pretty flat you know once you're pretty close you're going to be fine overall all right so let's take a little quick look here at the display so if you use the older creality this probably looks pretty familiar so we got the name here ender 3 max so this is our nozzle temperature so we got a target temperature and then actual temperature our fan speed here is 100 percent the x y and z positions the feed rate which is the speed and it is adjustable by just spinning this knob you guys can see it changes so if you want to go faster or slower or right on the fly you can do that so here we have a progress bar with the percentage finished and the time that passed and on the bottom here we have information and right now it says ender 3 max ready and you control everything with this dial and then when you click it you get another menu you scroll through it like this so it's an older design but it works very well so here we have prepare and this is where we've been going we got move axes so here you can move them individually including the extruder we got auto home set home offsets disable steppers and this is what we did after we add a home to level so we can move it around by hand and then we got our preheat pla and abs lower so yeah so most of your place where you're going to go is into the prepare here and then we have control and you know here you can control the temperature the motion filament and other settings here here's where we're going to read the sd card which is not inserted at the moment we also got change filament and then language changer and about the printer we are on marlin version 1.0.1.6 so that's the date of it yeah pretty cool all right guys so let's grab our little micro sd card and the card inserts right here upside down so when we did that we can see we got a new information message here where it says card inserted so if we click on this and go down we can see it says now print from tf which is the sd card if we click on that we can see here that we have quite a bit of files operation video model so these are folders and let's see if we can get into the model folder here okay so yeah i don't actually see any kind of test prints right here which is kind of interesting because normally they do install it so i might have to go into the file on the computer to extract the models and then you know either we might have to slice them or they are already sliced but we'll check that out in a second all right guys so for the next part let's install some filament you can use the included little roll of filament that they give you it's actually a pretty reasonable amount but i'm going to go ahead and install a spool and so the first thing you want to do is you want to cut your filament on an angle it gives it an easier way to get through so so yeah we're just going to put it on the spool holder like this and then we're going to go into our filament detector i'll try to give you guys a little better view so yeah we got the filament detector here i'm going to go through that and then out of the filament detector into the extruder arm and so i'm just going to manually push it through and then we're going to release the tension on the arm and keep pushing the filament through as it goes into the tube and then eventually to the hot end and you guys probably can't see but there is a little blue light here on the filament detector that shows it is detecting and you guys can probably see it coming out the hot end so at this point we are ready to print but we need to jump to the computer real quick and see what's on the micro sd card and also we're going to slice something really quick so you guys can see how simple it is since this is just an ender 3 that's upsized all right guys so here we are at the computer and i've got the micro sd card connected let's open it up and see what's inside so it looks like we have a user manual in a pdf form so if you wanted to look over that here's by the way all of the parameters so here we have the software for creality slicer troubleshooting pdfs so here we have that model folder and funny enough there's no g codes just stl files of different models so we've got some kind of toolbox here so yeah they do include some stl files kind of strange ones some mazes but nothing too useful not even benchmarks of any kind the operational video so no g code included kind of interesting so you can use the creality slicer that's included but i would rather just use cura and then slice from there because that's what i'm used to so let's go ahead and install cura from scratch here because i haven't installed it here on this computer so you're going to go to ultimaker.com and then on software here or you can just search cura and it's going to come up so here we have a download button let's click it it's going to ask what are we downloading for so i'm on mac we're going to click on that and download and save so here it is downloaded let's open it up we're going to add it to our applications and we should be good to go close these windows let's go ahead and open it up so max is going to ask us if we're sure we want to open it since we know what this is and we can trust it we're going to open and there it goes loading up so we got 4.8.0 so it looks like a few steps they want us to follow disclaimers 
You can create an account if you want. I'm gonna skip. So here it's gonna take us to add printer. So we're gonna go down here to where it says non-network printers and click on that. And then we're gonna go find Creality. It's alphabetically organized here. So we have Creality 3D. So we have CRs here and there we have the enders. So we don't have an ender max in here, which is totally fine because we can pretty much use any of the enders here and just modify it. So let's just choose here Ender 3 Pro. Click next. And here you guys can see how it kind of has preloaded information about the printer. So all we're gonna do is just change the bed size. So the X will be 300 and the Y will be 300 and the Z will be 340. So yeah, pretty much everything else is the same. Click here on the extruder. Yep, it's 1.75 diameter. So yeah, everything looks good. So we're just gonna click next. And here we can see the build plate and the volume with as this blue outline there. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna click over here where it says standard quality. And you could try to print like this and you know, it should turn out pretty well, but let's go to custom here. And you guys can see here we can adjust a lot more things. And we're gonna click over here on these little lines so you can have basic, advanced, expert, and all. So I think usually I like advanced here where we have a little bit more to play with but not too much where it's cluttered. So here we have the layer height, the initial layer height. So I guess we'll keep those the way they are. So all this looks pretty normal here. So here we have the shell. This is quite important. I changed the wall count to three because it prints out a lot better. And then top layers I changed to five and the rest is pretty much fine the way it is. So you can choose to fill the gaps between walls. I usually turn this off because it seems just to waste time. So next, let's go to infill. We got 20%. I like to turn that down to 15, depending on you know what you're printing. And then you can choose the pattern of the infill and things like that. So I just leave it the way it is. So here we have printing temperatures, 200 is good. But the initial, I like to change it to a little bit higher. So we'll put 210. And this is our build plate temperature. So 60 is probably pretty good for this build plate. So now we're going to speed. So we're gonna print at 50 and the rest looks good. Except for the initial layer, I like to slow this down even more to 15. And the brim skirt can keep it at 20. That's it for that. Now we got travel here, which is retractions. And we're gonna leave everything the way it is. And if you are having stringing, this is where you would, you know, make this number the distance higher of retractions. And that should help. Cooling is all good supports which we're not using but if you are you're going to click this and then you know play with the support settings build adhesion is skirt three lines that's what i like to use and then special modes that could be useful here when if we do spiralized modes so if we click on that now we can print in spiralized and then we also get experimental here which is make overhangs principle and adaptive layers and usually i click this but doesn't really matter too much. You can try it either way. But yeah, pretty much that's everything, guys. And believe it or not, guys, these are the settings that I use for every printer with some slight adjustments here and there. But pretty much this is my standard profile here. So I used to print with 0.16 layer height. I recently moved to 0.2 because it saves me time. It seems like I have less and less time these days, so I need to print a little quicker. So I moved to the 0.2 and plus we can see the layers a little better and how they sit at this layer height. So, so now you're just gonna bring in a model here. So let's do a calibration cube. That's what I like to start with. So we can really assess how the printer does there. So I'm gonna click on slice. It's gonna slice it. It says it's gonna take 31 minutes. So here it gives us an option to save straight to the SD card that we have inserted. Or if we click on this little arrow, we can save it to a file, which you know you can do it to like a, your desktop or whatever. But let's change that straight to the removable drive and click save. We're gonna allow Cura to access that. And there it goes, it's saved. And we can inject it right here. And now we can grab our little SD card and go back to the printer. One thing I did forget to show you guys that if you click on the model here on the side, you can see how you can manipulate certain things like, you know, moving it around, obviously, and then scaling it. And you can do that individually here or rotating, things like that. So, yeah, if you want to learn how to use Cura, there's a lot of great videos out there, tutorials on how to process your models. All right, so we're back at the printer. I inserted the card. Let's go ahead and print from TF card. Scroll down to our calibration cube that we sliced, and we'll click on that, and it should start the print here shortly. We are preheated, and everything's ready to go. All right, and there goes the printer. So it's homing right now. Let's zoom you guys in a bit. And there it goes, it's purging. So from what I can tell so far, everything is looking really good. Okay, yeah, it looks perfect actually. And hopefully you guys can see there that it is going down and seems to be just the right distance from the bed. All right, well that's good. And right away the first thing I notice is that the printer is 
definitely very quiet or at least the movements are now the retractions are still you know quite heard and the z-axis as you guys heard it's quite loud as it goes up and down but as it's printing the x and y movements are silent completely all you can hear is just fan noise so i'm going to bring the mic in a little closer so you guys can hear So yeah, pretty quiet printer overall, mostly just fan sound. I'm glad to see that they implemented the silent steppers, but I'm not sure why they didn't do it for the extruder also. The Z I can understand, but for the extruder I feel like, you know, it's just one more stepper. But in any case, either way it's still nice that it has it. It's night and day difference between not having it and having it. So. So yeah guys, looks like everything is fine and we're printing away. So we got the cube printing here and it looks like it's going to be turning out pretty good. So it's only going to take about 30 minutes. I'm pretty excited to see what this printer produces because this could be my new favorite printer. If it's going to put out that quality print that I'm hoping for. And I definitely feel like this printer can replace the Ender 3 Pro for sure. And even maybe the version 2 depending on you know what you're looking for. And plus now you don't have to go to the CR models to get a larger printer. So yeah. I'm quite excited for this printer and I think this might be the best bang for your buck as far as a Creality printer goes. So as we're printing we can see that we pretty much have the same menu here but if we click on the knob there's actually a few things we can do as it's printing. We have tune, control, pause print, and stop print. Also change filament. Let's say you needed to change filament during printing and you also have language and about the printer. If we go to tune, that's the more important one here, we can see that we can adjust the speed, the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature, the fan speed, the flow, and also baby steps. So if you do need to go a little up or a little down, you can do it from here, which is really nice. So yeah, this could be quite useful. And then you got control, more features you can change, kind of like if we go into motion, you can see here that you run out sensors on, the outage recovery is on. So if we lose power, you know, we can resume the print. You can control the velocity, accelerations, things like that, the jerk. So it's a little more advanced, but yeah, we do have quite a bit of tuning as we're printing, which is quite nice. All right, so I went ahead and printed the calibration cube and a benchy. So we got a couple of things to look at here. And the benchy is still stuck to the build platform and it's pretty much cooled off right now. Let's take a look at the cube here first. So the X looks really good. There's quite minimal vibrations, practically no ghosting that I can see. So yeah, it looks really good on the X here. So here we have the Y. So the Y has a little bit of vibration, but not bad at all. Actually, it looks really nice. Also no ghosting, which is really nice to see. There might be just a slight hint of it, but very, very minor. So here we have the X wall, the Y wall, and then the bottom and the top. So everything looks great. So let's grab the calipers, zero them out, and we'll measure the axes. Starting with the X, we almost get a perfect 20 millimeters. Look at that. Let's do the Y. Also, right on the dot, look at that, guys. This printer is definitely very accurate. And let's see how our Z turned out. Wow, very impressive. It is literally pretty much perfect with some margins of arrows. I mean, this is very close. So I would say that the cube turned out extremely well. And judging by what I see, I honestly was hoping that we were going to see the print quality being excellent. And I already like pretty much everything about the printer. And the print quality here just pushes it over the edge of me. Not only going to be recommending this printer from now on, but also using it myself. So the bench is still stuck to the bed and it's pretty much, I guess, cooled off now. So let's see how easy it comes off. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. So it just literally peels right off. And that's what's great about this bed is that, you know, when it's hot, it sticks. And then when it cools off, it pops right off and there's no scraping or anything needed to get the models off. So let's look at this bench a little closer here, guys. And right off the bat, we can see it turned out really nice. Now we do have some ringing, looks like right here and then we can kind of see it here on the flat part in the back here but as far as how the layers went down that's beautiful 
And also we got a little bit of ringing here, or actually pretty severe ringing there, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but there is some ringing going on. Other than that, it looks really good. So cooling is excellent. You can see our overhangs. We do have a, just a little bit of stringing, so it looks like we do need to up the retraction to maybe 7 millimeters, maybe 7.5, and that should go away completely. The box down here behind does have a slit in it. Yeah, as we saw there, the printer is very accurate, so usually the slit indicates accuracy in my experience but yeah this print is looking really nice overall and you guys can see the bottom also looks good too so yeah guys out of the box this thing is <laughs> quite impressive and i'm really happy with what i'm seeing so i think at this point there's no doubt that the printer is quite capable and will do pretty well with pretty much anything you throw at it. But I'm going to go ahead and print out a few other things and we'll check those out. And also I'm going to give you my thoughts of what I think about this thing and I'm sure you guys already probably know what I'm going to say. But nevertheless, let's see what kind of prints we can get out of this thing. All right, guys, so these are all the prints that we printed, and they all turned out very well, except for one, and it's the spaceship. So let's start with the little frog. I love printing this print because it's quite small, and there's quite a bit of detail, and the hand here prints separately from the body, so it connects as it goes up. So it's a good test on how the layers go down, and just a lot of little detail here in the fingers. And also the hangovers, and as you guys can see, it turned out really nice. And looking at the body here, so everything is printed at 0.2, just like we sliced at 50 millimeters a second. So yeah, beautiful prints, excellent retraction between the eyes. So yeah, I was very happy to see how well this little frog came out. So I also printed a rook here. It is quite large and it's in gold or silky gold, I guess. Nothing to complain here, very nice. Now you can see a little bit of ringing throughout the print. And so this is probably the main thing that I would say that this printer has that's a negative is this ringing in the print. But other than that, the print quality itself and the accuracy is just excellent. And I don't know if you guys would be able to tell, but there is like a stairway inside with, with a double helix strand in, in there. So it's kind of hard to see it. But So I like to print this bearing for testing the accuracy and the tolerances. And this printer did very well because we can spin this thing right up. Now it is tight, but... I think because, you know, it's very accurate, there's literally practically no play in the gears. So, yeah, it's quite impressive how accurate this printer is. And we saw it with the key when we measured it. So, very, very impressed with the tolerances. So, another print that I printed that's quite interesting is this spring-loaded box here. And I think the creator of this thing is called Sunshine. He has this little logo here. You probably can't make it out. but So he designed this to have a spring action with some gears that opens a door. And it printed out very well on this printer. And you guys can see that. And this part here is the spring. And that raises it up. And then it has the gears too. So quite creative and interesting. And there's also a hinge here. So yeah. And look at our walls here. They are very nice. So yeah, you guys can really see how well this printer puts the layers down. And it's beautiful. And this is a silky blue filament. And this was the bottom. So I printed like this. So, yeah, very cool design here from Sunshine. So here I printed a Squirtle. And this is just a companion to the astronaut. Hopefully you guys can see the layers. So they went down really nice and you can really tell that it's a step above just the generic printers. So we have the astronaut himself and he's looking really nice too. So we do have a bit of ringing here on the edges we can see or the sides. You can see some ringing right here too. So yeah, there is ringing going on. I'm not sure exactly what I need to adjust to fix that. But and here we have the bottom and you guys can see how small of an area that this model has to stick to the bed. And the bed does an excellent job of grabbing and then popping off when it's done. And if we look here on the M on the front, pretty nice quality there guys. 
So yeah, beautiful print here. Now for the last print, we got this spaceship. And what I wanted is to print, you know, the full height of 340, but it didn't work out. So I did have issue. And the issue that I have, I think has to do with maybe this printer needing a firmware update. So let's take a closer look at this thing. So it's still stuck to the build platform and I think it's pretty much cooled off. So let's see if we can pop it off here. And you guys can see how great this build plate is because we can literally just, look at that, just pull the model off. It's quite amazing. And if you have the right distance between the nozzle and the bed where it puts the layer down nicely, you shouldn't have any issues with the model sticking. So basically the way this thing is printed is in spiralized mode, which is you got a few layers on the bottom and then it goes one layer all the way around to the top. Now what happened here is it did the first four layers just fine normally and then after it went in spiralized mode, it had like a glitch or like an overload. And so it would print and pause and steps. And you guys can probably see all these pauses there in between and here around the foot. So this is literally the printer stopping and then going, stopping and then going, stopping and going. So, so I realized as it kept printing that if I slowed it down, it went away, so it printed fine. But then as it kept printing up, it started doing it again. So I slowed it down even more, and then it started going up, and it still started pausing it in random ways. And as it got higher and higher, things just got more weird and weird, and it really, like, just didn't want to print. So it was something with the software being overloaded. So I thought maybe I got a bad micro SD card. So I switched the micro SD card and printed another model. And you guys can see here, I still got the same issue. And so then I thought maybe my slicer, the new one that I just downloaded was incompatible or the printer was just freaking out. So I decided to use my old computer and slice the file again, but I still got the same thing. So I'm pretty sure whatever the issue is with spiralize mode is in the firmware or the software of the printer and just needs to be updated. And because this printer is quite new there's probably a couple bugs that still need to be worked out with the software or maybe i just did something wrong so in any case i wanted to share that that in spiralized mode i did have an issue and this might be just isolated to me so in any case let's summarize about this ender 3 max so the overall vibe that i got from this printer is it literally is an ender 3 that's oversized and it's like a mix of like the pro the version 2 maybe and a little bit of bits of pieces from cr models so it's kind of like a mix of all the different Creality parts, but it is mostly that Ender 3 feeling, especially I would say the Pro. And that's a good thing because this thing really seems very dialed in. And that's what I love about it the most is that it just works. And for it to be a budget printer with this build volume that it offers, it's quite incredible for what you get. Now, it doesn't mean that if you get this printer, you're going to get exactly these kind of prints. You might get better or worse. So keep in mind that you do have to tune it to get a good result, kind of like you know all your axes have to run very smooth there has to be no binding all the belts have to be you know tightened correctly and running true on their pulleys and things like that so but overall with some minor tweaking this machine really delivers on the print quality and i really like how they included this type of build platform that is really easy to use and quite friendly overall and plus it being glass you know you pretty much leveled out really good every time and you don't have to worry too much about leveling i also like here that the max version includes a filament detector so that that's nice. We obviously have power failure resume. So if you lose power, you can continue printing. Also, the silent steppers on the Y and X axes are quite nice, but I wish they would have added it to the extruder also. And because this is the newer Creality machines, it uses the more modern boards, which I think are 32-bit now, and you can't implement a automatic bed leveling sensor, and I think the bracket right here has an extra mounting point, you know, if you didn't want to do the manual bed leveling. But me, personally, I prefer just to manually level it myself. Now, if there's one thing that I wish this printer was better at, that would be the fan noise. It's actually quite loud and it's mostly the fan here in the electronics and this one here one and that's the only two on right now which is the heat break and the electronics fan and it's already loud but once you start printing and your coolers come on here the parts cooling fans and plus your power supply fan there's a lot of fan noise going on so to me this is the biggest i guess negative and it's not even you know that big of a deal but i did want to point out that it's quite audible and you know it does kind of get a little bit annoying if you're really close to the printer but hey we used to complain about stepper motor sounds i guess now we're going to complain about fan sounds so yeah guys as you can see i don't really have too much negative things to say about this thing i really think creality here hit the nail on the head with the max to be that
that perfect budget printer that practically anyone can afford and be able to print large models. So in my opinion, if you're looking for a printer, and even if you're looking into the Ender 3 version 2, I would say check this thing out because, yeah, you don't get a more fancier display, but that really doesn't play much of a role in, you know, actually printing models. And the extra build volume here is what really counts. And also not to mention that if you're just getting started, this is quite an easy assembly here. So yeah, I would definitely recommend this for pretty much anybody. If you've been printing or if you're getting into printing and you are looking for a large format, the Max here really hits the spot. And also not to mention how compact it feels for the volume. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit long, but hopefully I covered enough things here for it to be valuable. So if you did enjoy it, then hit that like button. And if you want to pick up the Ender 3 Max here, I'm going to have some links in the description. So check that out. And if you enjoyed 3D printing videos, I got more to come. So stay tuned for that. And if you made it to the end, thanks for sticking around. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.